I thought so. Joining me here on the TRS podcast line is Nev from Them Guns. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? You, I, I'm doing pretty well, man. I appreciate you cutting some time out here. Uh, this is a, a, a pretty busy time for you guys, man, as far as the band's concerned. Uh, the new video, Fireworks, is out, so we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, the new LP, uh, From the Shadows, uh, also, you know, coming out as well uh, so i guess you know, as a band you mentioned before we got started you guys were looking for like a new producer or something so i, I guess we'll start there man what's the deal with uh you know, looking for a new producer right now well we just found one the guy that did from the shadows uh bill gall he actually moved out of the state and uh it kind of is a tricky thing to find the right producer that has the same ear and knows what you're looking for and can kind of take the songs to the next level um, we, you know, we've tried with a few and we just weren't really very happy with it. We just now started working with Eddie, uh, wall. And, uh, I mean, he's been really great to work with. He mostly does, um, kind of like heavier metal than we do, Okay. but uh, he's been right on, right on cue with what we've been doing. So it's been great. Now working with a guy, obviously you guys aren't, aren't necessarily a metal band by any means, but you're working with a guy who does a lot of metal stuff. Does he give you different... It, you know, obviously a little different perspective in that genre of music as far as as far as tones and riffs, those type of things. Has it allowed you guys to uh, you know maybe take a different look at some songs that you've been working on as far as tone and, yeah. and that type of thing? Or exactly, um, and that's kind of what we needed. The so the guy that we had before him, we did some recordings, and he just seemed to record it, and that was how it was. And um, we needed someone that would you know try some different effects, try some you know, mixing levels with different things. And that's, he brought the next songs exactly where we wanted them to go. Um, you know, with, you know, different uh, phrasings or, you know, change of lyric here and there. And he was right, right with us. Very cool, man. Now with this, uh, the LP that's out right now, um, you know, from the shadows. Um, now, did you, is that uh, something you guys finished with the producer that had, had left the States or? Yeah, we finished that with him. It's actually uh not the newest of recordings. It's been recorded for a while, and the first time we never really had any, uh, you know, um, advertisement or anything like that. So we kind of didn't get any reviews or nothing. So we were able to re release it, but now we're re releasing it with something to piggyback it with some new material to come out right away. Well, I mentioned that's frustrating too. You, you spend a lot of work. You know, I don't think sometimes I think people forget the amount of work that goes into writing and recording and making videos and you know producing and you know there's a lot that goes into to making a, an album uh, and to have that you know have to have it released and then not get the push maybe you would like. Um, so this time around, is there anything that you maybe learned different? You know, as far as uh, industry wise, uh, as far as you know, approach is concerned. Um. That's really kind of like a hit and miss kind of situation. You get one company that is able to um, uh, advertise better, but they don't have the same kind of audience that you need. Or one that has the audience, but not the numbers. And it's just a tricky hit and miss kind of thing. Now, you guys have been a band for... I don't know six, almost seven years, I guess now at this point. So, uh, and I've heard, I've heard of you guys. When I had the chance to get you guys on the podcast, I was really excited uh, because I kind of, you know, you're loosely following you guys for a couple of years now out in the, uh, you know, I guess, I guess technically the LA scene is that where you guys classify that as, you know, from Santa Cruz. But um, was, did you say you're an LA band? Yeah, yeah. Now by this time, we're pretty much an LA band. Uh, a very, I think LA, you know, I think Nashville's kind of the same way. That's where I'm at. I think it's it's a tough scene to, to break into because there's just so much going on in the music scene. Do you guys feel that way uh, in the LA area where it's like, yeah, there's just so much going on. We got to get outside and, and play shows and do other things. 100%. Uh, we kind of are a little bit um, resistant to playing too much here and oversaturating it. 
Right. And, you know, everyone you say, you know, you want to come to the show, I say, yeah, will you come to mine? You know, and it's kind of just a over-saturated area for music. And uh, we love playing outside of town. Um, we're doing some Vegas show, a Vegas show is on May 24th at Vamped Lounge. And then there's actually a pretty, pretty cool little bar here in L.A. called Bar Sinister. We're playing there uh, the 25th. Nice. And that's kind of like a goth bar. Um, and it's really nice because it kind of brings its own audience. And you don't have to worry about struggling to you know, invite the same 500 people that you've done for every show. <laughs> right. It's nice to have new people there to you know, lend an ear. Well, that also, you, you with a... You know, a different audience allows you to kind of play different songs and kind of, you know, especially if you're working on new material, you know, figure out what's going to play live in, in front of a crowd that hasn't heard you before as well. Uh, is that something you guys kind of been experimenting with right now? Yeah, that's exactly kind of where we're at. We have um, some new material recorded, but it hasn't been released yet. And that's kind of a funny thing because people are there to hear the stuff they know and you want to play the new stuff. But, uh, you know, once it's released, it kind of gets gets a better reaction, I think. Right. Now, as far as you know, songs that you have done right now, are you looking at like a full length? Are you looking at like an EP? Or how much uh, material do you guys have ready to roll out right now? Um, right now, we're kind of on the release single by single kind of idea. Okay. Um, enough to make a full length album. We have the songs. We have. Um, a few random recordings here and there that we've done that aren't exactly with the album in mind. So we're, right now we have about six or seven songs that are all kind of in the same realm. So uh, with that, we're going to release them one by one. And then when it gets to nine, 10, 11 songs, we'll release that as a full album. Nice. Well, uh, is, any working titles? Uh, you got, I don't know if you get if you do that until after it's done. Do you have anything like on the back burner as far as like working titles right now, as far as uh, uh, album titles concerned? Uh, there's two that we're kind of going in between. Uh, one of them would be Dark Horizon, and the other one would be Humunculus. Hum Humunculus? Yeah, it's a pretty wild thing. It's <laughs> basically when you get a you need like a magician semen and a fer and a fertilized egg, and, and you can basically create some sort of hybrid chicken human kind of deal. <laughs> uh, Who, who's who's the magician semen that you have to get for that? Is it does it have to be like a famous musician, or can it be like just your run of the mill variety street performer? I mean, Lance Burton would be great, but I think that's pretty pricey these days. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, We'll try the street performer first. <laughs> right. You get trial and error, I think, right? I mean, you just kind of see where it goes. Yeah, and, exactly. you know. <laughs> Do you, like, have, like, a form letter uh, for other musicians? Like, would you please send, with, like, a little test tube that goes out, please please send semen to P.O. Box? <laughs> yeah, pr pretty much. We have a few different artists that we kind of have in mind to do the, uh, the album <laughs> That's great, man. Uh, that's good stuff right there. No, I, I think the working, the second working title is is probably the direction you should go for sure. And I mean, and for video content alone, I, I think is endless there. You know. Yeah, exactly. We have we have two songs already recorded for um, uh, for the which, whichever it becomes called. Uh, the first one is called "A Shot in the Dark," and uh, the next one is. Uh, called The Invitation. So those are the ones that we're doing fully recorded for that. And then we have about five or six that are in line to get recorded shortly. Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing some of the new material. Uh, you guys just released a video, uh, Fireworks, uh, back in, I want to say, I think Feb I think actually it came out February 14th, uh, ironically enough. Yeah. But, um, talk to me about that video, uh, you know, in, in general, and that song in general, as far as you know, the creation and putting that video together. It's a pretty cool video. Um, it's probably my favorite visually that we have. It's not my favorite song that's on the album, but visually I think it's got a pretty cool accompaniment with the video. Um, the video is kind of just about, oh, you know, midlife realizing that you've been listening to the wrong people and not doing what you felt in your heart and kind of leaving that all behind. 
Um, and the video is kind of just, you know, fireworks and as you're leaving town. Um, and we had sparks that we were shooting off in downtown LA. It wasn't exactly the most legal setup, I don't think, but we <laughs> we got it did. Well, it's I, I thought it was a really cool video, man, and I, I like the. I like the aspect of uh, there, there. I think there should be a little danger and recklessness to it. I think it adds. Uh, I think it's a little more genuine that way, and it doesn't look overproduced by any means. Exactly. Oh, definitely, definitely not overproduced. Everything we do is pretty bare bones in video wise, at least. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you, but I, I think that you know the, the DIY aspect of, of the music industry, and even you know on the media side as well, I think is very, very key. Uh, I think if you know, yeah, I mean, if, if you get to a point where things are very polished, that's 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 great, I guess. But I think there's supposed to be something kind of raw and and uh, and dirty about uh, the, the, you know, rock and roll music, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Now, um. With the band name, I'm sure you probably get asked this quite a bit, but I'm, I'm curious about you know bands you did not select uh, before selecting them guns. Was there like a list? Do you remember any names that were kind of on the board or on the chart or something like? Yeah, maybe we'll go with you know this. What, what, what kind of led you uh, to select the uh, the name? Well, there was a, a few of the guys that I played in with a band previously that fed into them guns that aren't in it anymore. We played in a band called Fire in the Sky. Um, and then, uh, that kind of all separated and when we're thinking, it's been a while, but I think a few of the ideas we were coming up with were like love hammer, (laughs) 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 that's the one that sticks out. Don't Google that, uh, for those listening, just, you know, make sure you're not at work if you're going to Google love hammer, you know? (laughs) (laughs) That's good stuff, man. Um, yeah, we had a. You know, we usually do like like you know funny band names or whatever. We've had a we've had a bunch of really funny ones. So Banana Hammer was actually a band name that someone mentioned once. We had Loose Balloon. We've had some really fun ones that you know we're like yeah we were gonna call it that and then we decided otherwise you know. Yeah, th- there was this record store had to be back in like ninety nine or two thousand. It was called Pug Records and it was kind of independent record store that would have bands play there. And um, I always remember seeing, it was like a little band, I never heard of them after that, nothing. But they were kind of like a Green Day type band, and the band was called Mandy's Dirty Panties. <laughs> and great. they were actually probably one of the better, like, you know, you know, uh, just un- unfound bands that I've seen live. It was great. Yeah, that's always fun when you, when you go see a band and you're like, yeah, I'm not sure what to expect. It's just the opening band or what have you, and they completely blow you out of the water, man. And I, I mentioned you guys have had that experience several times as a band too, where you know, you're opening up for someone and you know someone comes up after the show, be like, man, I, I've never heard you guys before, but damn, that was awesome, man. Which has got to be a good feeling. Yeah, that's a really good feeling for sure. Now uh, um, they have. Uh... With... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry, Ben. Go ahead. No, because we, we played with kind of, we don't have the exact pigeonhole in the sound that we have, so we played with a lot of different kind of genres. Um, so it's always cool when you go and the genre doesn't match up exactly, but, you know, everyone still kind of enjoys it. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's important to, uh, to kind of have that, that connection, you know, live, uh, and it seems like you guys are obviously t- trending that way. But, you know, before we get started here, uh, I was talking about a new segment that I want to do on the show, and I guess I'll introduce it now. And, and it's funny, I, I understand why you, you, you didn't want to do it, given um, who your uh, your mother is. Uh, um, I'm sure she'd probably she'd be like, why are you reading? Uh, basically, for those uh, just listening, this we usually we don't announce segments like this, but moving forward, we're going to have a segment called uh, Parent Text or Parent Tweets or something like that. Uh, but many probably don't even know this, that your, your mom is Priscilla Presley, which is pretty amazing. I, I didn't realize that and i didn't want the whole interview to be based on that i figured yeah, we're closing out here i figured i'd mention it um and i imagine she probably wouldn't like uh reading her text i wouldn't think right not not the i don't think it'd be her favorite part of the show <laughs> <laughs> i'll get a stop and desist order from your mom i don't want that man i can't handle that you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, i mean you guys have i met you guys have a good relationship she's you know Obviously, you know, in the music industry, I mean, does she give you guys tips, advice, or she just kind of stay out of it and let you kind of do your own thing? 
It's kind of a, a, a double pigeon or a double-sided sword kind of deal. Um, you know, she's definitely supportive, but she's not, you know, involved too much. Um, and, you know, you would think that it would be a really big help in the music industry to have, you know, connections like that. But really, it's kind of been almost a, a down point because everyone that she knows are kind of a lot older in the industry that don't really have any, you know, connection to this genre right and uh and everyone that also gets involved is also you know trying to get involved you know managers want payment before right they do anything it's just you know not the best uh you know introduction at first yeah i bet you probably probably attracts people that probably don't have your best intentions at heart and early in for you know the the yeah. name recognition yeah. or you know the the paycheck at the end when hey if you go in and your intentions are are right the paycheck will be there when things work out you know um yeah I, I, I guess I didn't think of it that way about you know it you know obviously the genre specific stuff and then you know you have the other side of it where you know the vulture mentality of the music industry in full force there exactly and you know it kind of also draws a lot of people that wouldn't normally find us to the music we get a lot of like on our Facebook, a lot of grandmas show up on there that wouldn't normally be there. Right. And they have a little bit of a different opinion than a lot of what we do. Oh, man. Yo, I can only imagine. What I, do, does anything stick out to you? Do you get into that? Like, when you look at the comment section, that's always usually the, the, the worst idea. But, uh, you know, reading into the comment section, I imagine you hear some, some pretty ridiculously ta- uh, awesome takes, though. I mean... Just like, where's this person? You know, he's, he's obviously got hit in the head with a baseball too many times sitting out in left field. Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of, like, you know, uh, re- deeply religious comments. Oh. A lot of, you know, obviously ignorant, un, you know, uninformed comments kind of deal. But right. sometimes they are kind of funny. Yeah, I, or I imagine you, you. Sometimes you just have to laugh at those. I get people on Twitter that mention stuff They're like, "Hey, you interviewed so and so, and you said this and this, not that." And I'm like, I don't know. I, it came from the person I interviewed, so I, I would take their word over yours. How does that sound? You know, <laughs> like. <laughs> but you can, and then you know, there's the whole thing of like people being offended, and, and it's okay to be offended, but you can't be more offended than the person that it's about. You know, you see these stories on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, and people are like, oh, I'm outraged over somebody said this, that, and the other, and the person it was about goes, yeah, I forgive him. It's no big deal. I'm over it. You can't be more offended than the person it's about. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, you can't let that get to you because the, the people that are saying that stuff are just, you know, people behind their computer all day with a lot to say about, you know, nothing. Yeah. Yeah, man, uh, I'm right there with you. But uh, uh, as far as uh, the release is concerned, is there a, do you have a hard date or something that you're kind of putting on yourself? Like, hey, man, I want to get this album out by, you know, August or September. Um, is, is that in the works at all? Or is this kind of free-flowing when it's done, it's done, and when we find the right guy to do it, it's it, it'll happen? We're still kind of writing the re-release of the album. Um, but it's also, like you said earlier, you know, when it, when you – put all the time and stuff into your first album um that's kind of why it you know takes so long to release the first one is because you have as long as you want to do everything right and with this re-release it kind of gives us time to not be rushed to get the next thing out immediately and just put whatever we have first so it's um we're not rushing but we're we have in mind that we got some stuff to write and finish Gotcha, man. Well, hey, uh, Nav, you get, you're always welcome back on, on the show, man. I hope we had a good time here. Uh, you know, when new material comes out, by all means, man, definitely keep us in mind here at TRS Podcast. It'd be nice to have you back on, and we'll wrap about some new music and stuff, man. Awesome, man. Thank you. Good talking to you. Yes, yeah, good. Say, uh, same here, man. It is uh, Them Guns.